Guys, my BMI was literally 34.2. If you know anything about BMIs, I was obese. People have genuinely been calling my friends and my family, asking them, what did Brini do to lose weight? And I know myself, no one can tell me what I could have, should have done. I know myself. At that point in time, I was going to stay there. I was going to get bigger and bigger and more unhappy and more unhappy. And he was like, you're going to be skinny. And I said, great, sign me up because anything but that. I don't think I realise how much food is literally joy for a lot of people. I didn't realise how much comfort and joy I found in food. I look how I want to look. I buy what I want to wear and it looks good, guaranteed. Life is already hard and I just feel like your weight or your body image shouldn't be an added burden, an added thing that you have to be worried or concerned or sad about. I personally believe in throwing money at your problems. It's not new to those who watch my channel. Guys, this is just my truth. I'm just being honest with my thought process. That's how I was thinking at the time. I was like, anything but this, sign me up for skinny. Do I regret it? I'll tell you a little bit later. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Hope you guys are doing well. So today I'm here to talk about the elephant in the room, which is clearly my weight loss. I'm excited to make this video. It is a long time coming and I feel like after I've made this video, you guys will stop asking me questions. So you guys want to know how I lost the weight. Just a few disclaimers and we have to make disclaimers on YouTube because we have to get there before a thought gets there or someone says something in the comments or something, something, something. You try and cover all bases. I want to make this disclaimer. I am not here to defend myself, defend my decision, defend my right to lose weight. I'm not here to defend my decisions, but to offer full disclosure. You have questions, I have answers. I was always going to share about my weight loss, but I wanted to do so in my own timing. I think for a lot of people who are like, why don't you just tell us? Or why are you taking so long to tell us? And I think it's generally because I am always very open and transparent about whatever I do. But this weight loss has been a huge change in my life and something that I feel like I had to first get comfortable with and come to terms with and it took me a while okay that's the reason for those of you who watched my video on body dysmorphia i think i put the video out last year you know that my body image is a very touchy subject and you guys have obviously noticed people commented and said you fit your thick are you pregnant all this kind of stuff and it's just so unhelpful but i really read the comments and for me to get on youtube and film knowing I don't like my body, it's only the grace of God. Because if it was up to me, I would not show my face. When I gained weight, there were a few like rude comments, a few rude Snapchats that people would send me, but not as many people commented on my weight gain as they commented on my weight loss. And honestly, whether it's weight gain or weight loss, it's my body. And it made me so self-conscious. Like I couldn't get away with people commenting on my body, commenting on my change, comments on my weight loss. And I honestly felt objectified by some of you. And I kind of distanced myself from answering DMs or going live. And that's just not who I am. I like to be open, but I just felt that there was a few people that overstepped their boundaries and were quite invasive. So I want to start by addressing three groups of people. The first group that I want to address are the genuinely curious but respectful. And you guys obviously noticed, but you never said anything. You just said, Brini, you look great. And for you guys, I honestly respect you guys and I thank you. And there were other people who were genuinely curious and respectful who asked me what I did to lose weight because they want to know how they can lose weight. And I could tell the tone between each of these three people. The second group of people that I want to address are the nosy and the invasive people. And I honestly don't respect you guys. I'm sorry. And you may think, oh, so many people online. There are people that I don't know who obviously follow me or watch me who would come up to me in the street or if I'm at a restaurant or if I'm out with someone and be like, yeah, so what did you do to lose weight? And I'm just like... First of all, do I know you? Do you know what I mean? My followers don't come at me like that. Those nosy and invasive people I don't respect, those people that would 
comment on my photos and comment publicly, right? Commenting in the DMs is different, but commenting publicly and making it seem like I had to give you guys information when you wanted it, I didn't respect. The third group of people that I wanted to address were the accusers. And you guys got blocked. Those of you who just accuse, I don't know, accuse me for not being open, not being honest, for being dishonest. That was never the case. I was always going to share in my own timing. And I think what this whole situation has taught me a lot about boundaries because I realized I didn't have any of you guys. I didn't have any boundaries with you guys. And on this channel, I'm always preaching about having boundaries, but I never had boundaries with my followers. I felt like you guys were entitled to know everything because that's how I started my channel, being quite open and transparent about my life, everything really. But then I realized that, no, I need to kind of hone it back and take some control back and realize that I don't owe anybody. And there was a lot of people, even my friends, a lot of my friends, they love me. They always want to protect me. And they'd be like, really, you don't even have to make the video. It's nobody's business. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. But at the same time, I am an influencer. And obviously my changes are quite noticeable. Like I said, again, I was always going to share, but in my own timing. And I don't mind people asking respectfully, but people that who, who are invasive and just or the people that go on the attack i don't respect you guys and i hope that you guys can be a lot more respectful to creators on the internet a lot of people say well you guys put yourself out there yeah we put ourselves out there but we also can have a private life we can also go through relationship issues marriages divorces children like we can we have a right to say actually this is where I start and this is where I end. These are my boundaries. So I really respect those who just said you look good and kept it moving. You guys don't understand how much minding your business and offering love and support regardless of how curious you are, how you feel. I appreciate that. And I appreciate that on behalf of other influencers as well. And for those of you who are not like that, I think you should take a leaf out of their book. Even they taught me how to be towards other influencers. So for you guys that are respectful, I genuinely love you. This video is for you guys. With all that being said, before I tell you guys how I lost the weight, I have a only a few apologies and those are the, for the people closest to me that I didn't tell what I'm about to tell you guys today. And I know this sounds so dramatic, but once I get into the video, you guys will understand. But for the few friends and family that I did not tell, I'm sorry, forgive me. It's only because I didn't want it to get out before I got a chance to share it for myself. And you guys may be like, really, Brini? And I'm like, yes. People have genuinely been calling my friends and my family, asking them, what did Brini do to lose weight? You know, disguising it. Ah, uh, what did Brini do to lose weight? Like, isn't that crazy? Like, people in my real life are getting calls and questions from people that follow me or look at me online to ask them. Yeah, so that's why I didn't tell every single person. I only told a few people. And I'm sorry if you're only finding out now. People from my chat, people that I love. I'm sorry, but here it is. <laughs> okay, Brini, so what's the deal? Okay, so for those of you who had an idea or for those of you who had no clue whatsoever, I had bariatric surgery, AKA a gastric sleeve, AKA weight loss surgery. <gasps> Yes, I did, and I did it literally one year ago, January the 5th, 2021. Okay, so what is it? It's basically a sleeve gastrectomy. It's where a large part of the stomach is removed, so it's much smaller than it was before. And I'm gonna share a quick example on the screen of what it looks like. This basically means that you cannot eat as much as you could before the surgery and you get full sooner. So a large part of my stomach was cut away, not my belly, my actual stomach organ. I had a gastric sleeve, not to be confused with a gastric band or a gastric bypass. They literally cut away 85% of my stomach. I know, I can see your faces now, drastic, Absolutely. Why did I take this route? That's what you guys want to know. As mentioned before, if you watched my last video, I was opening up to you guys about my um, body dysmorphia. You know that I have battled with my weight since I was a little girl. I was the chubby girl, 
not because I ate a lot, it was just my genetics. I held my weight in my stomach and in my thighs. It's just what it is. Thanks mom and dad. Thanks granddad and grandma, <laughs> wherever it came from. When I was younger, everybody would always say, oh, it's just puppy fat, it'll go away. And it did. When I grew up, the weight just fell off me when I got into my teenage years. But I still didn't feel so skinny or thin enough, especially compared to the models at the time in the magazines and on TV. Yes, I was influenced. Most teenagers are. But I would look in the magazines, look on TV and see the women with their washboard stomach, with their abs, skinny little stomach. I literally never wore a crop top when I was a teenager because I always, always, always had a belly i still have it right now i always had a pouch no matter what i did i would always hide my stomach by putting my hands in my pocket let me know if you guys can relate as if that was doing anything i would actually put my hands in my jacket pocket like this to hide let me know if you guys can relate because i know i was not the only person i also used to suck in my stomach <gasps> so much so that it became unconscious i would just do it and most of the time i wasn't breathing even now i feel like it affects my breathing and sometimes my anxiety because i'm forgetting to breathe because i'm so busy holding in my stomach now it's so natural i did it for so many years i can't really rationalize my thinking too much because i was a teenager i just wanted to fit in and i felt like i was never skinny enough obviously looking back now i was probably this size actually smaller but i think in my mind i was still that chubby kid I was probably this size or smaller, like a UK size 10 or US size 6. So then the trends changed, the society changed, culture changed, income, Kim Kardashian and people of that nature and curvy was in fashion. So I felt more comfortable. I felt like my shape was now normalized, right? The normal size girl was now back in fashion. It was now normal. Skinny was out. Kirby was in and I was right there in the middle so I actually started to embrace my shape. By this time I'm blogging, I just started blogging, I'm a blogger now and I'm in the limelight as well. I was also modern at the time. So I stayed in the gym still trying to achieve a flat stomach and I was eating right, I was working out. I didn't have the knowledge that we had back then but I could not achieve my goal of getting a flat stomach and yes that is what I was chasing back then. So I thought long and hard during that time about getting liposuction i just didn't have the money to do it so honestly that's the reason why i didn't do it when i finally did have the money in 2018 the new thing at the time was getting a fat transfer aka a bbl which a fat transfer is basically liposuction but instead of throwing the fat away, they actually can put it somewhere else, right? But I thought, why would I waste the fat? Let me just stick it in my thighs and stick it in my ass. I did that in 2018 to the horror of my mother. My mother was like, why would you want to do that? I'm like, I've already decided, I'm doing it. Come to Turkey with me. So I got a fat transfer in 2018. For those of you who watched the video, you know that even after the surgery, I still bloody wasn't happy because of some complications. You can watch that video and see what happened during that time. I wasn't happy because my stomach still was not flat. So fast forward after that, I think I kind of just learned to accept it because I definitely was not going to go on the knife a second time. No, 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 no. Not for that. No. I wasn't gonna do that again. So I decided to be comfortable with my skin and thought, okay, let me just go to the gym. I was working with my personal trainer at the time. Good. And I looked great. 2019 was a great year for me. If I stayed at that weight, I would have been ecstatic. I would have been so happy. You wouldn't be watching this video right now. However, I did not stay at that weight. I did enter a new relationship. And you guys know what they say about relationship weight. I gained a lot of relationship weight because we were eating out and I was happy, okay? I had happy weight, okay. But I feel like I was still kind of controlled controlling it. I was putting on weight, but it was that nice weight. You know when you get to that weight where you're like, I look a little bit thicker, yes! But then before you know it, so I was controlling it. I was like, yeah, I'm a bit thick right now. I'm going to continue to enjoy myself, but watch your weight. And then the pandemic hit. 
I was cooking every day. I was trying new recipes. I was booed up. I was eating, 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 eating. I was in love. I was in love and I was eating and I had not cared in the world. Yes, I was still gaining weight, but I felt desirable. But you know how weight just creeps Creeps, 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 creeps up on you. The gyms had closed. I was eating more than I was burning. And uh, this was the result. When I weighed myself, and I realized that I had become actually heavier than my mom. And I say heavier than my mom because at that time, my mom was a big woman. My mom's lost a lot of weight now anyway, not through surgery, but she lost a lot of weight now. But at the time, my mom was always the bigger one. I always saw my mom as big. So when I realized that I weighed more than her, I was horrified. I had never been this size in my life. And so for those of you who have never gained more than one dress size in your life, and those of you who have never lost more than one dress size in your life, I don't think you'll actually ever understand the total shock I had from going from a size 10 to a 16 in just over a year. 11 stones to 16 stones and my body felt it. I began to get sciatica, which is basically a shooting pain from your lower back to your lower buttocks right down your leg. It was absolute hell. And so I knew I had to do something. I went keto crazy. This is me basically giving you a timeline. This was last year. No, this was raw. This was 2020. This was pandemic year 2020. 20. So I went keto crazy and I managed to lose two whole stone and I was feeling myself and I was proud of myself and this was my weight loss. I managed to lose it with keto and intermittent fasting and can I say guys this is the key. It works. No brainer. You're like why don't you do that? When the story is complete, you understand. So the gyms were back open. I was working out and I felt so bloody amazing. I then decided to take myself off of keto and start adding more protein or carbohydrates. I can't remember what one it was. Bad idea. If anyone's ever been on keto, you know that how you come off keto is very important. Because if you don't, the latter will be worse than the former you will put on the weight and then some. And so that's what happened to me. Then the second lockdown hit and the gyms were closed again. At this point, I was like, bruh. Like I tried working out by running on the road, working out at home. I really tried, but I couldn't sustain it. So I was just like, you know what? <sighs> I'm in a relationship. <laughs> So I gained the weight back and more. I didn't give up. I wouldn't say I gave up. I just didn't think about it too much. I was still in a relationship. I was still going on vacation. Nothing was stopping me. I didn't feel bad about my body. Part of me didn't actually really know how much weight I put on or was really that concerned about it until I saw a video of myself in my ex's phone and he had recorded me eating at the living room table and I turned around to look at him. This video horrified me. I literally looked like one hench uncle okay like it was bad thinking back now my ex literally used to take unflattering pictures of me i remember there was one time i want i saw in his phone he had taken pictures of my feet in bed and i don't have nice feet <laughs> I mean, they look for right now, but my toes nails weren't done. My ne my toes looked horrible. And when I saw my feet in his phone, I was like, and I was asleep. Like, why are you a creep? Like, why are you taking pictures of me while I'm sleeping? And unflattering pictures of me. But I think when I saw that video that he took of me, it was that it was then that it dawned on me that I was large. Like, I was putting on weight. Like, that was the first time I genuinely saw myself and then we were watching Kevin Samuels if you ever watched Kevin Samuels used to insult women by calling them a linebacker whatever the name is and after that he began saying it to me as a joke and I kind of laughed it off but 
looking back I, I knew the guy hated me but anyway fast forward we broke up I gained more weight my grandma died I gained more weight I was grieving I was comfort eating I was trying to numb my feelings I was trying to get through the day and I was gaining weight and now at that point I really was not happy I'm sitting here feeling like trash me this jumper is big but it's making me look bigger I can't wear big stuff to cover myself because I look bigger I can't wear small stuff because I look bigger and self-conscious conscious I need to change like there needs to be a change I feel awful in my body I feel massive ugly <sighs> something's got to give gonna change it gonna change this shit can't take it anymore it's ruining my feelings it's ruining my mood and usually if i wanted to change it i could if i set a goal that i'm gonna lose weight i did it right but there was something different about this time that i could not i tried i'll insert videos here like i tried uh, we're back we're back we're back back to work Put the information down, we're gonna get Greenie back in shape, guys. Back to her 20, 2018, 2019 shape. To lose the weight, I tried to get myself back in that mental zone because if anyone's ever lost weight, you understand that it's a mental thing. You can get your mind right. There were times when I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna enjoy myself, but when I'm ready to get back on, I will get back on, and I always got back on. But like I said, there was this time, there was something different. I literally, and I'm not a can't person, but I literally could not do it. I was mentally weak. And so I began to look at my options and one of my options was to either get a second BBL or the second option was two of my friends had recently got a gastric sleeve and I didn't really know anything about gastric sleeve until they told me. They looked bloody amazing and I was thinking about it. Different people were saying maybe do this, maybe do that, whatever, but I wasn't sure. But I know that the reason why I definitely did not want to do a BBL for the second time is because I didn't want a fat BBL. BBL. As in, I didn't want to still be large and just get my waist sucked in and my bum out, but still be big, if that makes sense. On top of that, I wasn't really willing to risk my life for the second time. If anyone knows, a BBL fat transfer is the deadliest surgery out there. I didn't think I needed to do that again. I wasn't leaning towards that. And my goal now wasn't about shape. It was about shrinking. I wanted to literally shrink in size so like i said two of my friends they were probably the same size as me they're twins by the way carmen and cleo shout out carmen and cleo i'm gonna do a video with them soon talking about it and they were my size and they literally shrunk before my eyes and they looked like completely different people in a good way and I was like, do you know what? That's the option. So I did a bit of research on it. As I, as I said, I didn't really know much about it. I'll admit, I kind of was quite ignorant to how drastic my life would change post-surgery. But at that point in time, I did not care. All I knew is that I disliked my body. I disliked looking this size. And I'm a public figure, okay? If I was working an office job, like, okay, I can definitely hide. I could not hide. I still had to get up, post photos, post videos, and be an influencer. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Hope you guys are doing well. So all I know is that I wanted a change. Anything to stop my back from hurting, my knees from hurting, anything that would change me being able to go on walks without my limbs hurting. Or just being plain tired, okay? You guys have seen the photos, but guys, my BMI was literally 34 point. Two. If you know anything about BMIs, I was obese.
And as much as I've battled with my weight in my life, I've never thought I'd see the term obese. I never thought I would fall into that category. And so being that my BMI was 34.2 obese, I was eligible for weight loss surgery. I booked the clinic that my two friends had gone to and that was Health Store Turkey. So originally I wanted to do the surgery in December of 2021. But when I had spoken to Health Store Turkey, they advised me. Ni Hao, she's very helpful. She was like my coordinator. Loads of like consultations with her and the doctor and stuff like that before I went. And she had advised me, like Rini, enjoy Christmas, okay? Enjoy eating, enjoy drinking. Don't do it in December. Wait until the new year. And that was the best advice that I got because the last time I ate a full meal was Christmas 2021. I had my surgery on January the 5th. So before the surgery, they put me on a liquid diet for one week. So it is two days post-surgery. So I am currently on a um, liquid diet slash, um, what do they call it when you actually like mash food down? Basically soft diet. So I've been drinking, I've been eating this amazing smooth tomato soup. Um, from m &S, and it is delicious. I think it was one week or five days and the reason being is that they needed to shrink my liver so that my liver doesn't get in the way of them operating on my stomach. So before flying to Turkey, I was on liquid. I was only drinking soups. I had a nice tomato soup from m &S, which was amazing. Um, but five days, I couldn't have any solid food and I was actually very strict with myself. So I really accomplished that. This is what we're working with. Yeah, this is what we're working with. I thought there was a hole in my nose. But this is what we're working with. So yeah, this is what we're going to change. Yay! So then I flew with my mother to Turkey on January the 4th. The transfers picked me up from the airport along with some other people who were also having the surgery. They drove us straight to the hospital and I basically checked into my room. If anyone knows anything about Turkey and their surgery is that their hospitals look like hotels. So I was checked into my hotel slash hospital room. I got to meet the staff. I got to meet Nihal, who was my coordinator. They also booked my mum into a nearby hotel. That night, I did a lot of like weighing, a lot of checks to prepare myself for surgery the next day. So many tests I could do without this. This is like the fifth test today and I'm knackered, I'm exhausted, I just want to go to sleep. That night, I think I had to stop eating, drinking liquids that they had given me before a certain time. So my surgery was the next day. The doctor, this is my first time seeing a doctor on the day of the surgery. And he basically came up and he kind of checked me out. So this surgery, after surgery, you need to have a new way of eating. Yeah. New habits, it's a new, new lifestyle. Yeah. So you need to set your mind to that. Now you need to change your mind. So I need to have another question. How, how long is the surgery? Like 45 minutes. So he only cares about, he only cares about the patient. So okay. don't mind the you know, timing. Can I finish our work with Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> and asked me like what size do you want to be basically there's a certain percentage of your stomach that they cut away not everyone has the same percentage and so i asked them what was the most you could cut out and he was like 85 percent and i was like i want to do that and he was like you're going to be skinny and i said great sign me up because anything but that guys this is just my truth i'm just being honest with my thought process that's how i was thinking at the time i was like anything but this 
sign me up for skinny do i regret it i'll tell you a little bit later after all of my checks and everything i was wheeled away to surgery so i'm about to go down for my operation now exciting times in the waiting so yeah see you on the other side Okay. I'll see you when you come back. I remember the room of the surgery being very white, very clean, very chilled. I remember there was good energy in the room. There was doctors, nurses. I think they was even playing like reggae music. I feel like they were playing Bob Marley or something. They gave me my anesthetic and before you know it, I was out like a light. Eh, like a light. And I would, next thing I know, I will be waking up to hello. Hi, hi, hi. I felt fine. There was a bit of discomfort and I chilled down there for a little bit and then they wheeled me back up to my room. When I got there, my mum was awaiting me, happy to see me that I was fine. The next couple of hours, there were checks upon checks upon checks upon checks. I could not sleep two hours without a nurse coming in to check something, to check my pressure, to poke me. This I was being interrupted from my sleep. They would get me up to walk every so often to keep myself from moving. I was a little bit annoyed because if anybody knows me, I like my space and I like to sleep. But this wasn't a hotel and I was not on vacation. <laughs> they were there to do their job and they did their job fantastically. I could not fault them at all. The service was amazing as is turkey for surgery anyway after that i would meet my dietitian and my doctor my dietitian was very very helpful you're going to start your full lipid diet mm -hmm. i have written the dates there for you hello how are you uh, do you feel tired uh, that's normal i know you feel tired mm -hmm. you feel sleepy but uh, you should walk okay please yes. Uh, so it has all the vitamins and minerals yeah. you need. Yeah. She was telling me about the road ahead. She also gave me my milkshakes and all of my medication as well to fly home with. I was supposed to leave on the Saturday. I booked my flight to leave on the Saturday, but I felt like two days in the hospital was not enough. And I felt a bit weak and a bit tired. And so my mum flew out on the Saturday and I flew back the next day on the Sunday, which I really appreciated. The service and the staff were just incredible and easy. The service surgery wasn't painful as it was keyhole surgery there was no cutting me open I have only a few scars I've got keloids I keloid so I've got these which will go down flat soon it wasn't painful but these places where I had the holes I had tape over it so it was a bit uncomfortable every time I moved and so when I came back home to London that's when the real work began and um, they gave me tablets I had to take every so often they gave me blood thinners and they gave me this injection that I had to basically inject every night at 10 p.m. All right, so every night at every night at 10 p.m. for five days, I have to shoot myself with this needle. Um, I can choose my stomach, my thigh, or my arm because I can't really see my arm. I'm going to do my stomach. I'm not sure if it's a good idea, but my stomach is already hurting anyway, so I might as well just, you know, shoot myself in the stomach. But yeah, this is what I have to do. Grab some fat. Grab some fat. <laughs> Grab the belly and then stick it in. Ouch. And then just push and put it out. Oh and that was basically to thin my blood to stop me from getting blood clots they also gave me milkshakes and stuff like that and they gave me a whole sheet of what i can eat so the milkshakes they gave me for my source of protein i actually became sick of them but i was determined to go through the process so I started a week on liquids and to be honest, I was just drinking juice upon juice upon juice upon juice because I just needed my sugar kit, which isn't really good, but 
Yeah. So after the surgery, I had to go on four stages. So the first stage was the liquid stage. Second stage was the puree stage. Third stage was the soft foods. And the fourth stage was the small foods. And the small foods is basically what I am still on now. So at each stage, my stomach was able to have more, take more. But one thing is I could not drink and eat at the same time. So I had to drink and wait half an hour before I ate anything. I am extremely happy because I feel like I can drink, um, I can take more down and not to sip. I'm actually taking gulps, which I shouldn't really be doing, but I'm very happy that I can actually eat again. So week two, very happy. Very so happy. life after surgery, okay? My relationship with food. And this is where it gets interesting because you don't actually realize how much of your life revolves around food. How much of your social life revolves around food. We literally plan things around food. You wanna meet up a friend? Okay, let's go out to a restaurant. Going to this family function. What are we eating? Oh, dishing for Ernie oh, and that's it. Winnie is dishing for Chris. Yeah. And mum is dishing for her brother. And I'm dishing for myself. No, the babies. That is yours, I'm going to dish for Milan. Food is a part of our everyday life and you don't actually realise how much food plays a part until you're restricted with how much food you can actually eat. So at the beginning stages, I remember I went to Athens with my cousin. I was still trying it. I ordered a large bowl of pasta, knowing full well I could not eat the pasta. I had one spoon and I waste that food. Not only did I have the bowl of pasta, I had the nerve to get a starter. So this is my portion size. Yesterday I got way too much food. I'm probably not gonna be able to eat all of this, but we shall try. I'm really thirsty, so I'm gonna sip on some juice. But yeah, vacation with a VSG surgery. I kept doing that and it began to depress me. And I think because my mind had not caught up with the fact you'll never be able to eat how you were eating before. Never. Why? Because my stomach is small. I have the stomach of a child. I know you're thinking, Brini, why would you do that to yourself? Yeah. But my relationship with food has changed. My lifestyle with food has changed. I'm even going out tonight. I literally only eat starters. Small plates, sushi, dim sum. I love Chinese restaurants because they have small portions anyway. They have little finger foods, little sushi. Sushi's my best friend. Dim sum, like little plates is what I eat. And like I said, I haven't had a full meal since Christmas 2021. And I'll be honest with you guys, I don't enjoy food anymore. Food is not enjoyable to me. I don't look forward to eating in the sense that I used to before. I'll tell you what my favourite meal was before. Oxtail, rice and peas with coleslaw. That was my comfort meal, right? Anytime, good times, bad times, I order my oxtail, my rice and peas, my coleslaw, and I would yam that up. Oh, when I used to live at home with my mum, I had the best restaurant, they closed down now, but oh, uh, even thinking about it now, like I would eat that, no problem. I remember I tried to do that after I um, had the surgery. Tell me why I could not even eat one oxtail, one piece of oxtail. I could not eat it at all. I, it actually made me sick, but I had to tell my mind, like, Greeny, listen, the computer says no. The body says, no, you can't eat like that, even if you want to. Do you know the saying that they say your eyes are bigger than your belly? That's literally the case for me. My eyes are still big. No, not anymore, actually. It's been a year now. But my eyes were still bigger than my belly. And like I said, I don't enjoy food anymore like I used to, right? The only thing I now enjoy is that first spoon. If I, ha I can eat anything, right? I can eat anything, but I can only eat a spoon of it, literally. So if I had oxtail rice and peas, I'll put a piece of oxtail, piece of rice, piece of coleslaw, all in one spoon. Mm, that's it, right? And so another time I enjoy food is when I'm so freaking hungry, like I'm so hungry. But like I said, I can only really take a bite. That's the reason I'm still losing weight. That's the reason why I'm losing weight 
because as much as I'm eating frequently, I am not eating a lot of food because I physically can't. What happens when I try to eat more? I, first thing that happens is I get phlegm in my throat and I have to spit, I wanna spit. And obviously doing that when you're out is not cute at all. During this whole year, I've had to really find my limits. I rarely get that spitting thing unless I'm being really greedy. I don't care, I'm eating so fast because I'm just hungry. I'm eating more than what my stomach can. That's when that will happen. Or the second thing will happen is that I actually feel sick or actually like throw up. And that's only happened to me once or twice this year because I literally know my limits. So as the year has gone by, my stomach has expanded and I felt it expanding because of things I couldn't eat before. I'm now eating more of that. So I know that my stomach is expanding. So going on vacation has changed. I went to uh, Texas back in March. And you know what they say, everything is big in Texas, baby, including the food. And you know what? I went to, I went to Texas. I tried to eat their crawfish. I tried to eat their king crab. I tried to eat all that food. I was definitely in the bathroom throwing up. There was, that was definitely a time I was in the bathroom throwing up because like my small belly said, no, absolutely. What the hell are you doing? So yeah, going to America and being able to enjoy the food is definitely that never happened but it wasn't totally bad because I still was able to enjoy but just a little bit and the people who I spent the most time around I did let them know that I had the surgery like guys that I will go on dates with they'll be like Greenie you're such a cheap date you're a cheap date you don't order anything like you barely eat anything so I saved a lot of guys a lot of money this year I think I should be proud of myself <laughs> Definitely not a gold digger, okay? Because I'm not eating anything. But yeah, people that I was closest around or who I would go out to eat with, I would let them know that I had the surgery and um, so they wouldn't be like, really, you're not hungry. And one thing that has become my friend is doggy bags. I have to take a doggy bag home. I never finish my food. Never, ever finish my food. And I can take that food and actually eat it throughout the week. If it's a meal, let's say I had salmon and I had mashed potato, I had vegetables... I would eat some at the restaurant, take it home, and then I would eat it throughout the week because I don't like wasting food. So, but then day two or day three of eating the same thing, I'm like, bruh, it's done. I'm not, I don't enjoy this anymore. However, that's what I usually do. I take the doggy bags home. So anyone judging people take got doggy bags home, mind your business. Another thing is, obviously I can't eat and drink at the same time, so I have to pick. So if I'm out and I'm gonna have a cocktail, and then there's people coming around serving food. I will literally have to drink my cocktail first, wait half an hour and then eat the canapes. Now it's getting less and less time. I think depending on how much I drink, I can eat something, like a small thing at the same time. Can we talk about comfort eating, depression? I don't think I realise how much food is literally joy for a lot of people. I don't realise how much comfort and joy I found in food. I knew that I liked to eat certain things. I knew I liked certain foods. I knew I liked sugar, but I didn't realize how it, good it made me feel. And so this year, especially not having the access to be able to eat food like I wanted to, I can't say it caused depression. I was doing some research on this. I spoke to my dietitian. But I can't confirm it was solely because of the food. But I know, as in not being able to eat food, but I know that it did play a part in my depression this year. Because it's like, food warms you up. It makes you feel good inside. It comforts you. But being, like, so hungry and then only being able to eat one thing, it wasn't sort of vibe right now my stomach's expanding i drink tea 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 is my happy drink and i'm able to drink and finish that whole cup of tea so it's not so bad it being cold it being winter and not being able to eat it definitely does something to you psychologically also i've had to learn to actually face my issues face my problems instead of eating i don't emotionally eat anymore i can't emotionally eat anymore because it never satisfies it's not the flex it used to be so I've had to face my feelings and I think that's been a big area of growth for me this year so that's one thing the surgery definitely helped me with facing my feelings and not eating them another thing swallowing is quite hard for me so as much as I should be taking my supplements and my vitamins 
I find it very difficult because my stomach is so small. It feels like I feel everything. It feels like I can feel every single thing that goes into it. So it kind of makes me feel a little bit awkward. My good friend Amina recommended a supplement to me. So I've been taking that. But one thing about me I'm, is I'm very inconsistent. Sometimes I forget to take it. But she recommended me that and I've been taking that. Another thing is I'm not in control of my weight right now. I'm losing when I'm not trying to lose it. And that's why when people comment, okay, Brini, don't lose any more weight now. Or family members like, Brini, you can stop now. is offensive to me because it's not by choice at this point. Which kind of sounds a bit scary. But don't worry, I have a dietitian who is monitoring me and I don't plan on getting slimmer. I do plan on being more consistent with my meals, eating more healthy stuff as opposed to eating snacks and drinking tea, right? So I'm looking to add more protein in my diet, even if I can't eat or I'm not hungry or I'm full, like actually taking time to eat and finish a meal. Because the thing is, I'm so impatient. It's not like I can't finish a meal. I could finish a meal. It's gonna take me two hours. I don't have a time, I don't have that patience. So it's about me learning to be patient with it. So the good things about this weight loss surgery, outside of everyone's personal opinions, is I look how I want to look, and that is petite. Like, this is a look that I genuinely enjoy now. Mind you, my, my bum is lacking, right? I've lost a lot of my ass. However, I look how I want to look. I buy what I want to wear and it looks good, guaranteed. I no longer have to buy clothes to hide certain areas. And if anyone that's been at a certain size, you know how hard and difficult it is to be like, oh, I can't wear this, or having to hide certain areas. I no longer have to wear control pants. I can put on a figure hugging dress without spanks, without control pants. I don't need to edit my photos or nip and tuck anything. I can literally take a picture and post it, which is a bloody miracle. I can go into shops and I can buy what I want to wear and I can look how I want to look. I've always been confident naked, um, but now I look better naked and there's a difference. I wear bikinis on the beach. I'm just, I just feel lighter. I feel like I can move freely. I feel like I'm not as self-conscious as I was before. And I have one less problem in life and I don't have to figure out, I don't have to be worrying about my weight. I personally believe in throwing money at your problems. It's not new to those who watch my channel. Isn't that the reason why we make money? Isn't that the reason why we want to make more money? To make our lives easier? Life is already hard and I just feel like your weight or your body image shouldn't be an added burden, an added thing that you have to be worried or concerned or sad about. Another thing is I didn't have to work out during this whole weight loss journey. I did work out. I was working out in summer, as you guys can see here. Honestly, this this is this is my, uh, I actually love this size. I actually love this weight. But like I said, I'm not in control of my weight. I'm not in control of what size I am. When I told the doctor to take off 85%, he told me I was going to be skinny and this is what I got, okay? But I was working out in summer, but I stopped because I realized I was wasting my money and I didn't have to work out. The weight was coming off and I felt like as I, if I was working out on top of the weight coming off, I would have been skinnier quicker and I didn't want that. I wanted to kind of pace myself and I wanted to enjoy how I was looking at that. So I stopped working out, but I will be returning to the gym in the new year because I am looking a little bit frail. So I'm not really like upset about people's comments, but I'm looking a bit skinny. But I think the reason why people are a little bit like concerned is because I don't know what I did. And also because it's, the, the change is drastic. And the thing about social media is that everyone doesn't follow my every move. Like sometimes I kind of think that everyone's following my other, every move, but someone may have seen me six months ago, come on my page and see me now and they're like, <gasps> Brini, who's that? Where did she go? So I completely understand. But like I said, I'm looking a bit skinny now. I want to build muscle. I want to build my glutes. And I want to get stronger. I think my idea is getting stronger. My stomach is still there, but I have been doing fat freezing and skin tightening with Sculpt by Jay. I had a few sessions with her, as you guys can see here. I'm going to continue with her into the new year. A lot of what I thought was actually fat in my stomach is actually skin. Okay, so we have Brini here. What we're going to do today is we are going to do some fat freezing on the lower belly over here 
because as you see, we've got a little bit of fat over there. So what the fat freezing will do is it would reduce the area by freezing it and that will break it down because um, she's expressed to me that she feels this is a bit of a stubborn area despite um, her losing weight everywhere else. And um, we also want to follow it with some skin tightening to tighten up the skin. Because as I always say to people, there's a difference between fat and skin. So this is a perfect example of what I mean by skin. This is skin. And also, I had really dense love handles when I was bigger and it's still there. But she also told me that that is also skin and it's fat. So that's why I'm doing skin tightening and fat freezing because I want to actually expedite some of those problem areas that I still have. So that is the plan going forward. Um, another positive is that I eat what I like and I still lose weight. And when I say I eat what I want, I mean one packet of crisps, one chocolate bar, three chicken nuggets, like one spoon of rice and peas, like... I eat what I like, but I don't eat a lot. It gives me the happiness that I need from the sugar, but also I'm not putting on weight. So this surgery is basically all about portion control, helping me to get in control of my negative eating patterns. So if you are a binge eater, if you overeat, if you comfort eat, this is a little help, a little booster to get you back on the right track. So for those type of people, I definitely recommend the surgery too. And I was never like huge. So a lot of people probably wouldn't think that this surgery is open to someone like me. But a lot of people are getting this surgery, even supermodels who are already slim, because they're using it as a way to control their weight. And they may not have got 85% of their stomach cut, but they may have gotten less cut they're using it to control their weight so do i have any regrets about this surgery one of the regrets i have is i wish i was more prepared and there were more videos out there like this talking about the cons the not so fun parts about having the surgery i watched a lot of videos about people after having surgery concerned about gaining the weight back and there were people that actually gained the weight back. That's all the videos that I really saw about post-surgery. And now I'm sitting here like, how is it possible to gain the weight back? How? I can't even fathom right now because the amount that I'm able to eat is not a lot. I don't see myself gaining the weight back. I don't even know how that's possible with most of my stomach gone. But I do know that my stomach will expand over time. Over the year, it has expanded, so it will continue to expand. What, another thing that I will say is if you're going to take 85% of your stomach away, be prepared to be miserable for a while. And I had my miserable time for a while, but I'm lucky enough to have my friends who had the surgery that were like, Greeny, this is totally normal. I was like, but girls, I want to have a, I want to eat a chicken wing. I can't even eat a chicken wing. This was like a few months ago. Now I can eat two chicken wings. You know, we're like, why are you still trying to eat chicken wings? Eat salami, eat small cheeses. Really, we're going we're gonna to take you shopping. Don't worry. So I'm so happy to have those girls there to support me. And we're going to do a video together for all of us to talk about our experience with the surgery. And like I said, food is joy for a lot of people. I was a foodie, but I wasn't a huge foodie. So this may not be the surgery for those of you who love food because prepare to be miserable for a little while. And so some of the objections that people may have is, but you didn't need it. You could have worked out in a gym and it's like, yeah, I could have, but I couldn't and I needed help. And so this is all the surgery was. It was help. It was a bit of assistance. It was me that couldn't eat for 12 months how I wanted to eat. And people will say, Greeny, you took the easy way out. Trust me, the surgery part was the easy part. The not being able to eat how you want to or how you're used to is not easy. Emotionally, absolutely not. Was it easier than going to the gym and restricting my carbs and knowing that I have a stomach that can eat but having self-discipline and self-control? Yes, it is easier than that. But like I said, and I know myself, no one can tell me what I could have, should have done. I know myself. At that point in time, I was going to stay there. I was going to get bigger and bigger and more unhappy and more unhappy. And I wasn't willing to do that. So I made the choice that I made. Honestly, it's taken me a while to really enjoy my new look. I think people comment on it more 
than I actually do myself. I wake up every day like, yeah, you look good, but it's never my focus. I know I lost weight. I know I look different. And through the year, as I was losing weight, people were looking at my outside changing and all I could care about is, okay, what do I eat? When do I eat? How can I eat? And other life stuff outside of my body, other emotions outside of the surgery. So people are like, oh, bro, you, you lost the weight. And I'm like, yeah, cool story, bro. You, you're looking at it more than I'm looking at it. You're thinking about it more than I'm thinking about it. But yeah, life was still happening around me. So it's taken me a while to actually accept that I look different now. And I'm like, Brini, good job. You made a decision that was right for you. It may not have been the perfect decision, but it was my decision. And I stand 10 toes down on the decision that I made. But I'll be honest, I was and I still held a lot of shame about allowing my body to get to that size. And as much as people were like, but Brini, you still looked good. But what you need to understand is that, yes, I did. Because I embraced it, I didn't act like I was insecure. I didn't act like my weight was getting me down. I don't even think I ever discussed it with anybody. Like, I'm sad about my weight. I embraced the weight gain, but I knew deep down that is not who I am. Imagine gaining five stone on the weight that you are now and you've been the other size all your life. That is not you. Funnily enough, when I did the shoot in Greece, the plus size shoot in Greece, I was actually a plus size model. I was working with one of the photographers on the shoot and she said to me, Vinny, like when you get back, sign up to this agency, this agency, you will absolutely kill it. And I knew that I would kill it because I know how to model. Calm down, Brainy. I knew I would kill it because I know I'm good at modeling. Like I know my angles, I know how to move, I know everything. But part of me was like, I know I can make so much money doing plus size modeling, but it's not me, it's not who I am. Like this is not the size that I want to be at. Stop it. <laughs> Stop that. Stop that. <laughs> Immediately. Oh my god. Wow. Yeah. I love the body positivity movement, but I think people who are in the body positivity movement should have the right to change if they want to. If they want to lose weight, they should. I remember going away with a, a plus size model. I said to her, I don't know why I said it, it was a few years ago, and she was like an advocate for body positivity and she was a bit bigger. I can't remember what I said to her, but I said to her like, what happens if one day you wake up and you want to lose weight? Like, what's going to happen? I can't remember what she said. Eventually, a few years later, she did lose weight. She still does body positivity, but she's clearly not the size that she was. She looks different. And I think as influencers, we have the right to change however we want. I know that when your money is involved with your weight, money is not involved in my weight. Like, I'm not, I didn't lose any deals losing weight, but I know that with influencers some of them want to change but their money is tied to them staying the same which is quite sad but i think everyone should be entitled to change and do what they want with their life and their body because you only get one i am the size i want to be right now i look the way that i want to look that's the only thing i care about so i hope you guys appreciate my transparency at the time in which i wanted to share it just a few more facts about the surgery before i go I paid for the surgery with my own money. I think at the time I paid 4K, which includes your surgery, your hospital stay, a hotel for your guests, all your medications, your milkshakes that they send you home with, a dietitian for a year, and the regular check-ins that they do with you to make sure that your blood work is fine and your body's fine, all that kind of stuff. They really, really, really take care of you. So if this surgery is something that you've been thinking about for a while, or something that interests you and you've done your own research, not just watch this video, really thought about it. And one thing I really love about this surgery is that it's not in, it's non-invasive. It's literally keyhole surgery. They don't have to cut you open at all. The healing time is so fast. Like I said, all I have is the scars on my stomach and that's because I've got keloids. Once those keloids go flat, I'll be fine. And also as well, the mortality rates are extremely, extremely low. At the same time, I obviously cannot be held responsible for the decisions that you choose to make with your own life and your own body. So do so at your own risk. I'm just a random girl on the internet sharing her own personal experience in front of her camera. No, but seriously, this surgery changed my life. I know what it's like to battle with your weight your whole life. And I know something has got 
to give. I know for me, something had to give and it gave. And so I spoke to the people at Health Store Turkey and I told them that I was going to make this video for you guys. And as a thank you, they've given you guys 50 pounds off of your surgery if you choose to book with them. But you have to go through the link to get your 50 pound off the surgery. I'm gonna place it down in my bio. And so I think it's valid for about four months. So have some time, think about it and uh, take the link, store it somewhere safe and click the link when you want to book with them definitely have a consultation definitely talk to a doctor and see what they can do for you i'm not here to promote surgery you guys i'm just here to share my experience as you guys have asked me to there was a time that i was anti-surgery because i felt like it was just so extreme but having been under the knife twice now personally for me it's not that scary at all but that's just me. I have one more thing that I've been contemplating. I'm about, I'm 50-50 about it now, but is my boobs. My boobs look nice and round now because I'm wearing a bra. My boobs have always been saggy since I was a child, but since I've lost weight now, my boobs look like prunes. So I've been thinking about getting a breast lift and I'm aware at my options. I'm 50-50 now. But yeah, just letting you guys know that that's probably something that I might be doing soon or not. I have always been and I'm always going to be comfortable naked and I've never ever had surgery for anybody no man no person no Instagram no social media I've never done anything to change myself that was for someone else it's always been for me but when it comes to wearing certain tops or outfits I know that I would prefer my boobs to sit where they were supposed to sit <laughs> so I don't want to have to keep relying on tapes and all that kind of stuff but like I said if I do it I'll let you guys know when I want to let you know um if I do it it's probably going to be very obvious if I do do anything it's going to be with health store turkey because they've been so kind to me and so helpful to me and so supportive of me like I said to you I paid with my own money this is not sponsored at all but if you do want to use the 50 pound voucher off your surgery make sure you guys check out health store turkey so guys, the cat is out of the bag. I don't know what your response is going to be. I hope you guys get it. I hope I've been thorough in this video. Leave your comments, questions, and your concerns. I'll be making more videos about VSG, the surgery on my other channel. That's the channel that I'm going to have my two girls that did the surgery as well on, and we're going to talk about more about it. That's if you guys are interested in know about it. If not, thank you guys so much for watching. I always believe in making your own decisions, but making it with peace and through and in prayer i never do anything without praying about it first without having peace about it and i was I had peace about having this surgery i spoke to those who mattered the most some people said don't do it my mom said i'll support you regardless shout out to moms that are supportive but yeah i feel happy i look good when i weighed everything up i was like when i have a child i don't ever want to get back to that size i just don't want to get back to that size this will be the perfect time to have a child because the size is right but anyway i'm not gonna beat a dead horse this was how i lost the weight so quickly and i hope you guys are not mad at me all right guys see you guys in my next video subscribe to my channel